Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a twin flame energy checkup. We've had a lot of intense energies happening um, cosmically lately. The Lionsgate portal on August 8th and squished right up against that was the full moon in Aquarius on August 11th, which is known as the sturgeon moon. Sturgeons being large fish in rivers that tend to stir up a lot of silt from the bottom of that riverbed. So a lot coming up from kind of the depths and the subconscious um, within the dynamic, within both twins. Um, it feels like the energy of a lot of things that had been settled or had gone unnoticed um, really being unearthed. It brings to mind this idea of almost panning for gold um, at this point in time with what's happening energetically, really trying to um, kind of kick up some of that debris, some of those overlooked corners, and to try and sift through that, um, to find things of value and meaning, and to kind of discard the rest. That process of pulling and purging can be experienced or maybe has been experienced by you, by your twin in other ways. Um, maybe some of you have been kind of inclined to do sort of a cleansing or a purging of your physical belongings, of your physical space. Maybe you find yourself um, gravitating toward eating certain types of foods, away from other types of foods, the sense of wanting to cleanse and purify the physical vessel in preparation for or in tandem with um, sort of the energies that have been circulating. All of these factors, mind, body, and heart, really tying in um, in order to sustain and support this influx of energy that has been coming in, um, that has been felt. There's been some stuff going on with Jupiter, with um, the conjuncts of the North and South Node as well. So a lot happening cosmically. Um, Venus moving into the sign of Leo, so some really fiery energy, an energy of activation, activation of that heart center, that heart chakra. A lot of you might have been experiencing um, like literal heart chakra activations, pains in the heart chakra center, a widening, an expansion, a warming in that center, uh, maybe like a fluttering almost. Just things, again, that idea with the sturgeon of things really being kicked up from the silt, from the debris, from kind of the unseen aspects, these hidden aspects, these shadow aspects. Work that you've been doing up to now on yourself and that your twin has been doing on themselves, really having prepared the both of you um, for this juncture where you are then able to energetically or maybe even for some of you um, physically uh, in some capacity connect with your twin and that energy exchange, that dynamic between the both of you, um, really catalyzing or bringing you kind of closer into that alignment um, for that, that really um, deep digging, that deep dive to again, uh, kind of stir things up to uncover a lot of what has been sort of hidden and buried within you, um, you know, maybe some kind of memories and feelings and associations in this dynamic with your twin. Um, some clarity coming, things being shed, things being kind of extracted and moved beyond, creating that fresh space to allow love to come in, a greater clarity being revealed um, as far as the dynamic between you and this person, you and your twin, um, really starting to see them more clearly, to starting to understand things more clearly clearly starting to um, feel or experience that very tangible bond between the both of you, that energetic cord that, again, may be um, very closely aligned at this point in time. You're both really feeling this. You're both really experiencing this sensation. A lot of telepathy perhaps occurring. Um, a lot of this exchange of sort of kicking up that silt, um, that debris of the subconscious, um, those kind of blockages or sort of dusty corners of the heart chakra um, in order to really, you know, feel that, feel that sensation, feel that discomfort, feel these feelings that are coming up, purging a lot of this. A lot of you might be crying or just feeling very intensely at this point in time. Um, and then kind of coupled with that um, is this wash of kind of this loving energy, this soothing energy, this balm as the two of you from a distance or even in the course of through your direct interactions are really, again, exchanging this energy, um, setting things in motion with each other, kicking up that silt um, in order to, to really then set 
settle individually, energetically within the both of you, so you're able to come closer into that alignment. Um, there's a sense of things being kicked up only to move each other closer, kicked up only to move each other closer. Um, deep intimacy, uh, you might be dreaming about each other a lot, or again, telepathy could be pretty strong at this point in time. So I felt inclined to do um, kind of a, a check-in with that and to see maybe some things, uh, offer some confirmation for you about what you are experiencing, kind of a clue into what's going on with this person, what the two of you are sort of independently working on and then energetically almost in collusion working on with another with one another at this time from a distance or again um, just in sort of your interactions with one another as that energy is exchanged and then you both sort of you know go your separate ways um, you know, you go back home, the conversation's over, um, you go to sleep for the night. A lot of this can be sort of being processed during um, that kind of uh, liminal space uh, when the ego mind is kind of shut down, that gatekeeper is kind of at rest and um, what has been taken in, what has been exchanged energetically really can activate and touch upon some seeds that the time is now to really um, address these things, to allow these things to sprout or to clear these things away, um, to gain some perspective on what serves, what doesn't what can come forward with you at this next point in your journey and in your lives as individuals and um, as a unit and sort of shining a light on some things maybe that um, you know that this is this this is the season to start working on um, these are some of the aspects of of the shadow that need to be recognized that need to be acknowledged that need to be embraced and incorporated in the wholeness of your being So we've got the Four of Swords. So again, that's that energy of sleep, of rest, a lot of contemplation that might be happening. Um, a lot of energy that is exchanged between the both of you remotely, um, also in dreams at this point in time, or if this, if you are in contact with your twin um, and the two of you have some kind of face-to-face -face interaction, um, you know, some kind of tangible form of communication, or even if this is just telepathy, um, following those kind of experiences of, in a more direct way, exchanging information. And then again, um, sort of the, the signal or the vibration that is taken in by the both of you, um, that is registered by the both of you, then the way that that is kind of um, activating these other things, it's almost this idea of um, kind of like wind chimes and the interaction between the both of you being this wind, being this force, um, being this velocity that kind of sets things in motion. Um, it begins this symphony within the both of you. So you might be inclined to meditate a lot more. Um, you might be feeling very overwhelmed energetically and just drawn to um, kind of isolate into that quiet space, into that meditative space to try and contemplate um, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what's coming up, what this all means for you. Um, again, a lot of clarity may be coming in dreams or a lot of healing that is, that is happening in dreams, especially for those of you that are not in contact with your twin. A lot of this dynamic and interaction um, can really be felt and experienced during dreams, even if it's something that you're not remembering, um, based on the energies right now, kind of this idea of um, conjunctions and portals. There's a lot of openings right now, a lot of apertures, um, cosmically speaking, that is allowing for easier access to one another. Um, the collective as a whole, um, humanity as a whole, the earth as a whole is really experiencing um, kind of this this opening, this, this period of time where there's a lot coming in cosmically. And it, again, almost this concept of like wind chimes is really this energy coming in is kind of setting these other forces in motion. Um, it's disturbing that silt. It's kicking up that riverbed in order for maybe some things that were hidden to kind of come to the surface, these gems of wisdom, or being able to see things a little more clearly, something that, you know, might have been a precise belief system. Um, something you were very firmly attached to, seeing that from a different angle and being able to decide, is this something I want to bring forth with me? Or is this perhaps something that has been outgrown? Seeing things, um, you know, again, belief systems or, or even seeing your twin from a different aspect, um, maybe even seeing other people that you could have associated as a twin flame, recognizing them as perhaps something very different. This could be a time also, um, I don't like to use that word false twin. I think it's just, um, 
it's it's a particular face it's a particular um, facet um, that an individual can touch on of this um, this very kind of um, grand and next level energy that is known as twin flame energy um, and often when we connect with our our true twin energetically um, we're activated by them um, perhaps even at times before we have um, met them in the physical reality that activation that sensation when we bring that back down into our physical reality the natural response um, especially because you know these activations come when one is is not preparing for them it comes very unexpectedly and it's very natural to kind of look around and to um, just sort of identify or to focus perhaps on on somebody immediately within that vicinity to try and correlate that to try and pinpoint that where did that originate from um, especially if, because of sort of the un unanticipated nature of that. For most people, uh, that encounter with the twin flame, you come into it with very little information. Um, so it's almost like turning on a light in what was a dark room. And a lot of times that can almost be reaching for the first thing, the first kind of point of anchoring. Um, you know, associating maybe even a deep kind of soulmate connection with that, trying to make that piece fit, trying to force that piece in, um, which can often lead to a sort of a period of heartbreak, of disappointment, um, of sort of this explosive energy, this, this kind of uh, sensation of like this runner and chaser and a lot of friction in that situation. Um, this is a time where a lot of those kind of circumstances are really being sort of kicked up and revealed from a different face so that you're able to see that. Perhaps having been on a twin flame journey for a while, armed yourself with knowledge, having really educated yourself, maybe watching readings for a long time, um, you know, familiarizing yourself with that energy, feeling that energy, that sensation, that exchange with another person um, from a distance within you. And at this point in time, this is, this is a period of illumination where, you know, again, that idea of like a false twin or somebody you might have associated with being a twin flame, seeing that from a different angle um, and being at a point of being ready and able to kind of set that down, to, to kind of put that to the side, recognizing that for the very beautiful, um, almost catalyzing experience that that was, the, the point of you really being activated by that twin flame energy. Um, and then starting off on that path of seeking to, to find the point of origin for that, that process of moving into that energy of seeking um, is then able to align you more fully with your actual twin, with kind of the, the source of that beacon that your soul and their soul really connected with one another and you've kind of been following that home, following that back towards each other. And we've also got the Two of Swords. So again, a lot of blocks, um, a lot of ideas, maybe even misconceptions, um, seeing a particular person, maybe identifying them as your as your twin flame and, and to have almost this idea of like taking the blinders off, um, taking those guards down, allowing yourself armed with knowledge, um, maybe even some epiphanies or downloads that have come in through this, uh, this Lionsgate portal or other energies that have come in to allow you to have that kind of wider perspective, maybe on who that originally original person was for you. Um, you know, this, this idea of kind of being blocked or limited by a very constricted sense of, of your journey, the nature of your journey, the purpose of your journey with this person. Um, aside from ideas about even like false twins, this can be something where a lot of you are really getting to this place of, um, of releasing your, your twin, releasing the idea of 3D union, really investing in yourself, investing on working on yourself, um, moving out of this energy of remaining stuck, standing in place, um, holding your breath almost for somebody to really to recognize this connection and to um, act upon this connection and act upon these energies in the same way that you are or that you would like them to. And we also have the lovers. So this can again talk about aligning with um, sort of the truth of, um, of your soul, of who you are. And by doing that, you are able to then um, decipher uh, who your twin flame genuinely is. You are able to decipher um, sort of deeper into the purpose of that connection, the purpose of your interaction with this person. Uh, this is an energy of coming into balance as well with the masculine and feminine polarities within self. So a lot of that having really been active um, during this time right now of intense sort of cosmic and energetic uh, change and this time of you know receiving a lot of intense cosmic energy so you might notice at this time that your defensiveness 
um, kind of this, you know, wanting to, that mechanism of almost wanting to, to shut down and to step out of the emotional body and more into that intellectual body is heightened at this point in time. It's almost this, uh, this battle or this balancing act between that emotional body and, and that mental body. Um, as things have really been kicked up, that silt has really been dislodged, coming into that place of, of really um, seeking smoothness in that, allowing that to settle, um, collecting the wisdom that has been kicked up. Um, for a lot of you, this period of time can really also represent a shift of directing that focus on to self, directing that focus on to filling your own cup, moving from a place of standstill where you are, you know, just really waiting and anticipating for this other person to, um, to come through, to, uh, you know, wake up or to really um, start doing the work on themselves, start, you know, returning towards you or to, to really recognize and receive this connection in the way that you would like. Um, this is a, a direction, a redirection of the focus on self. It's this idea here also of these mountains, these challenges and moving beyond these things. Um, in a way, this process of really purging and what's being activated within you, um, within the collective and, you know, just with, within the collective of humanity at this point in time. This is a pivot point that is shifting us beyond um, some challenges, a lot of karmic cycles having closed out, um, a lot of difficulties having been moved upon. And so this energy of purge, this inclination of purge, it's, it's almost the, it's been the prelude and kind of this doorway that we are now walking into and through um, to a new cycle, to a new experience, to greater clarity, greater connectedness with our higher self, with spirit and with source at this point. So you could be getting a lot of downloads as well, a lot of epiphanies, a lot of clarity, um, experiencing and, and really feeling, maybe seeing signs of your spirit spirit guides or, you know, feeling the presence of the divine with you. You might be really inclined toward, again, meditation. And if you're not, that can be really helpful during this process as you're trying to kind of find your footing in all of this, make sense of all of this, take this all in. So, you know, just, just taking that time to be very gentle with yourself, to really ground yourself, to quiet the mind as much as possible, to receive what is coming in without trying to really process and make logical sense of it, allowing that energy to infuse, to kind of work behind the scenes, to, to make some shifts, to take those blinders off, to help really, um, you know, operate as a sledgehammer through some of these blockages and barriers within self, some kind of resistance to sort of move to the next level, move to the next step. This almost feels like this cosmic energy that is propelling things forward, um, almost eliminating the option of choice at this point. Um, and then it's just almost in a lot of ways, the page having been turned, um, the bandaid having been taken off, the blindfold being taken off, um, no choice but to look around, kind of the time to remain blind and ignorant to some truths, the, the time to sort of delay or postpone or procrastinate on um, some of the, the shadow work that needs to be done individually, uh, maybe some unhealed things that this connection, this dynamic with this person is really mirrored to you, has really shown to you, things you may have been avoiding for quite some time. This is the energy of being propelled into that, um, that there's almost no more deferring that that whatever sort of awaits you in your in your journey in life and whatever you know awaits you in this journey with this person that this is the time to um, sort of do that inventory what stays and what goes and we also have the seven of pentacles so this can talk about um, this aspect of waiting and also of seeds that have been planted that you are kind of in this process of discovering uncovering these things trying to find out the nature of um, this feels like the energy almost of being on the brink of something. A lot is starting to really culminate and come together with that energy of the, the silt, the river silt being uh, kicked up. That has revealed a lot of these kind of overlooked treasures or, or things that you're maybe still trying to puzzle through, trying to, to put all the pieces together with. Um, some hindsight that might be happening as well about your journey up to this point in your life and with this person and sort of what that has afforded you, the strength that you have cultivated, the gifts that you have cultivated, the tools that you now have, taking active control of your life to, to really be a more active participant and cultivating the type of experiences and energies you want to receive as opposed to um, just kind of operating in this sort of stale energy of resistance, letting go of the things that must go in order to make room for this new fruit that wants to come forth, um, allowing that a platform and a place in your life and in your energy um, and in your, your almost your expectations or belief systems, allowing that um, 
this idea of almost pulling weeds in order to really give that uh, that plant that nourishment the time and the space to to take in the sun to take in that solar energy that empowerment um, to drink the water the nectar from the earth um, to be very grounded very connected as above and so below and just allowing these energies to flow what's coming in the downloads the energies that are coming in allowing that to cycle through the physical body um, to take shape to take form to provide illumination in what ways it can and then grounding that out into your physical reality um, in the form of you know maybe a Again, sort of things that are that are discovered and then action steps that are taken from that. Um, this can also talk about maybe a lot of journaling that's going on as you're just trying to kind of sift through and sort through all of this, make sense of all of this, um, kind of an inventory of where you've been, where you are, and um, sort of the path that is being illuminated forward for you. And we've also got the Five of Swords, which is typically an energy of kind of loss and defeat. Um, but in this sense, it's almost this idea of um, kind of reclaiming your power from situations where you felt very powerless, circumstances with people where you felt very much in an energy of defeat, um, looking back on the past with a sense of regret, a sense of longing, again, that energy of really being stuck um, um, in that, in that reflective energy and kind of this woulda, coulda, shoulda energy. And the shift really occurring to uh, sort of reclaim that power, take control of your thoughts, um, to kind of release the past gracefully and, you know, recognize that the, the tact or the grace, the strength um, that you were either um, forced to cultivate within yourself or that was revealed to you based on how you um, have dealt with this situation, that all of that is, it's, it's armament moving forward that can help you in the next stage of your journey. There's a sense too of, again, with all of these swords and, and really just taking power back from, from situations that, you know, maybe bordered on um, kind of illusion or were things that you weren't really seeing clearly, even versions of yourself, outdated versions of yourself, how you showed up in this connection, how you showed up in the world that you're really coming to terms with. You're not empowering these versions of yourself anymore. This is forward-minded energy, sort of putting the past to rest, coming to terms with these things, um, defeating a lot of those demons or voices in your head, beliefs that you aren't good enough, that you aren't worthy of love, uh, maybe even feelings you'd had that it was somehow your fault the way that things turned out in this connection, any feeling of maybe foolishness about um, having, you know, poured your cup of love into the wrong vessel, um, or the, the, the vessel that wasn't cur the correct fit for you for a period of time, uh, really taking your power back from that and moving forward in another direction. And with the Two of Wands, this is that energy of forward planning, forward motion. Again, um, kind of this idea of taking the bull by the horns, um, seizing your power, um, harnessing your passion, uh, really focusing on um, feeding and stoking that fire within you using that to empower you and to really plan where do you want to go next. Um, understanding that as you are releasing, as you are kind of leaving some things behind, you're turning your back on certain things, that this is affording you a new kind of expanse, a new vista of possibility. Where to go next? Um, this can even be revelations that you're having about your connection, um, your feelings about this person, or even experiences that you are uh, kind of sharing with one another in terms of these sensations that are coming up, um, blocks that are coming up even, or, or things that are really being cleared within the two of you. It's giving you a deeper appreciation. It's bringing the two of you closer, almost energetically, or if you're in contact with this person, it's bringing some kind of clarity to the two of you where um, it's strengthening that bond almost. Um, sort of this energy of, you know, what is artificial, what is, you know, an ill fit, what is ill suited, that no longer being entertained and instead really gravitating toward truth towards stability, um, towards something that is reliable. This is this idea of even just energetically becoming very in sync with one another, um, to harness this energy, to use this energy, to feed this energy, feed this healing and empowerment into one another, consciously or unconsciously, as you really use that to navigate in this next chapter, this new kind of door to possibility that is opening for you as a lot of this, you know, this other energy is kind of being cleared away and moved away from. 
And we've also got the Seven of Wands. So this can talk about a little bit of resistance, a little bit of, of defensiveness, a lot of really intense energies coming in and um, kind of this inclination at times to um, be very overwhelmed by that, to kind of pull away from that, to try to stuff that down or push that away. Um, this can also talk about kind of this resistance to staying stuck in cycles and patterns and chapters of your life that you're really being called to move beyond. Um, ideas about your dynamic with this person, the purpose of the connection, sort of what the two of you are, are really meant to kind of work on at this point in time where you're meant to go um, moving forward. This is also a card of the higher ground and can really speak to this up-leveling, this higher perspective. Um, aspects of this connection, this dynamic, or even the nature of this person were very troubling to you before, getting that clarity, seeing things um, from that higher perspective, recognizing in yourself even, maybe qualities that are being exhibited by this person or in some way in the energetic dynamic, um, so that by understanding them, you are be better able to understand yourself and how to kind of navigate that personal journey between empowerment and surrender. So let's see what else is going on in the energy, any kind of blocks. Yeah, so we've got icebergs submerged. So this is that, uh, that concept of a lot that is really being kicked up from the subconscious. Um, that whatever might be happening in this connection between the two of you right now, even if you are in contact with this person or if this is complete no contact and separation, there's a lot that is being exchanged that is happening in the energetic realms, in the subtle realms that you cannot see with this person. With this idea of ice, um, you know, with this iceberg here, it, it really speaks to a period of time where things were stuck. This is that Two of Swords energy, that stalemate. Um, kind of there was, you know, this impasse that needed to somehow be worked through. And this is the idea this brings to mind almost of um, kind of that energy from within the two of you uh, melting that ice from the inside out that in some way there's been some kind of resistance um, from the ego level or at the 3D sense and this is something where now you know because of this energy that's coming in because of the the place in your dynamic that you find yourself it's really activating something within both of your cores um, that is stirring momentum it is stirring motion it is warming things up from within um, to kind of bring down those walls, melt those barriers, um, melt some kind of harsh feelings or you know, some kind of emotional blocks. You could be experiencing a lot of crying, a lot of tears, a lot of emotional purging as things that might have really been um, kind of stuck within you, stuck within this connection, are again being uh, dislodged, they're, they're being kind of collapsed um, and sort of moved through. Um, this is this energy of kind of purification, purifying that emotional body as well. And we also have waterfall effortless. So again, a lot of tears that might be shed at this point in time. Um, these can be tears that you cry inside or literal tears that you are crying. This also feels like something where, you know, through this energetic purge that the two of you are very much in tandem in this sense. Um, that sort of the tears that are shed internally or externally, it is reverberating to this other person. It is in some way shining a light on some things that they in their own particular manner are then being called to sort of clear or cleanse or deal with or acknowledge or in some way also sort of the work that you're doing on yourself to lean into those emotions, to allow these things to purge, allow these things to flow, to not hold back in, in feeling these emotions and sort of getting these emotions out of your energetic field. Um, you're helping on your end of things to clear that connection, clear that kind of, um, that, that silver cord, that, that, uh, that tunnel, that portal between the both of your hearts. Um, and it's something where, you know, you're energetically supporting yourself in this. Um, one or both of you may be very conscious of doing this work, may feel very inclined to do this work, maybe gravitating toward um, like some heart chakra healing exercises, or, you know, again, just kind of inclined to sort of feel those emotions, purge those emotions, um, sort of cleanse that water. Um, with this idea here too with this waterfall and it's bringing up that um, that kind of analogy to panning for gold that silt and uh, kind of the mechanism of that how you know in the riverbed and, and pulling up that uh, that pan full of uh, the debris and the silt and and what has been buried beneath and then allowing that water to kind of flow over those emotions to flow over as you kind of shake and shift and and get rid of all of what is not what you're wanting to hold on to 
sort of this idea of um, gaining wisdom, not just in this dynamic with this person, but in other areas of your life right now, collecting that wisdom, collecting those bits of gold, that bit of truth, that those, those points of value um, and allowing other things to pass. This is that energy of purging. Um, this is that energy of release. This is that energy of cleansing. And this is also an energy of momentum that what is taking place right now, this is almost the, it's, it's the journey. It's, it's the river upon which um, you as an individual and then this connection, the two of you together as individuals, um, you're being carried forth to a new chapter. Um, this is something as well with this energy of resistance that, that's coming up. Again, it, it feels very much like cosmic forces that are coming in, a lot of cosmic energy, sort of like the time is now. There's no more time to postpone this. Um, what is shifting on kind of the universal level is then reverberating down and creating these shifts um, within you as individuals and within this connection. So this can be very heavy, very intense, almost this idea of being carried over a waterfall um, without planning, almost against your will. And so there could be this, um, this inclination to want to push this away, to want to turn this off. Um, and so if you're feeling that again, this, or you're feeling this from your person, you're feeling that kind of that pain or that pressure, or that tension in the heart chakra, um, where they're kind of trying to put the brakes on and they're trying to really stop this. They're trying to hold their hands up um, against this flood that is coming towards towards them, um, you know, to just really take matters into your own hands, um, you know, take ownership for, for how you're experiencing this, experiencing this energy, either emanating from within you or from this person. And, you know, bring yourself into that space of tranquility, bring yourself into that energy of patience, um, you know, really feeling into your breath. Uh, employing those meditation practices so that you're able to ground yourself down, so that you're able to um, kind of gain some perspective and learn to flow with this um, instead of, you know, resisting this, allowing this to kind of flow. Even the, you know, the feelings of resistance you're picking up from this person, allowing these things to flow through your body operating as um, kind of that filtration system for the both of you with the knowledge that the two of you are constantly exchanging energy from that unbreakable cord that almost that tube or that that tunnel that that silver thread that connects um, the two of your hearts you know being that very active mechanism employing that uh, mechanism within yourself consciously can definitely help this person individually as well it can help both of you on your individual process of this and then ultimately kind of strengthening an honoring and um, sort of clearing the debris away um, from, you know, the, the deeper perception or the more clear perception of this dynamic that exists between the both of you. Okay, and we have security. So again, you might feel very um, sort of inclined to spend a lot of time by yourself right now, processing all of this, um, dealing with other people who, you know, in their own right, I mean, these, these sort of cosmic energies, these are affecting everybody and everything on the planet. So you could feel if you're, especially if you're a very sensitive person, you can feel a lot of tension emanating from people, um, people around you, sort of the, the climate of, um, you know, even crowded places that could be sort of overwhelming as you're kind of picking this up. Um, a lot of things, you know, that idea of the silt and the debris and what's really being kicked up, that being sort of um, a ubiquitous idea. It's applied to everybody. Um, and so, you know, people who are kind of uh, on that ascension path, who are very conscious in that, who focus on their healing and, and sort of their personal evolution um, would respond to these, these energies differently, would kind of take that place of mindfulness, would look into that, would investigate that, um, would seek to come to some kind of resolution or you know, just understanding and allowing that process to take place. There are other people out there that are not um, as, as spiritually aware. Um, they are not actively engaged in sort of um, taking ownership of, of what they are feeling that are, that are just kind of, you know, oblivious to that. They're, they're not very cognizant of that. Um, and so when they, like that idea of the wind chime are kind of activated, the bells are rung by that cosmic wind that comes in, they can be in that react mode where they're really projecting that where there's a lot of tension there's a lot of chaos there's a lot of confusion emanating from you know that same idea of this silt these deep buried things these these kind of memories or these soul wounds within everybody that's being really kicked up 
and it's a point of choice to deal with these things or to resist these things. So again, kind of being around other people, if you are if you're very sensitive to energies, might be a little much at this point in time. And if that's the case, you know, just taking that time for self-care, for, for rest, um, you know, for, for kind of uh, doing what you need to do to isolate and process, to allow these energies to flow through you, um, allow these truths to come up, purge these things that are really coming forth for you. And understanding that in that process, you're really um, stoking that inner flame. You're really uncovering that fire within you that, that may have dimmed, that may have been kind of obscured by that idea of the silt and the debris. This is an idea, this is an image almost of um, embers, like a fire that had almost gone to embers. And that could be the fire of this connection with this person or the personal fire within you. And through this period of, of kind of cleansing and, and removing some of that debris, that wind, that, that momentum that comes in, it sparks that flame again. It, it kind of roars that flame up um, from where it was just kind of smoldering down there in the ashes. Um, so this is also energy of phoenix and of rebirth and renewal. Um, and so again, things that are really clearing away or... Um, you know things that you are you're feeling on on a literal level on a, on a physical level or you know an energetic level are not meant to come forward with you into this next point in time that discard um, that purge that um, that kind of removal in various ways from your life all of that is really you know this preparation work kind of clearing that debris um, so that that inner flame can um, you know flare once again or even for the first time for a lot of you this can be a very new experience um, with heart chakra activations kundalini awakenings maybe having just encountered your twin for the first time and so you know this is that first part of that journey this is that first part of that um, that sort of awakening journey and you know through that process of crumbling and, and really you know feeling that overwhelm feeling that that kind of tension this is this idea of coming out of that dark night of the soul um, so kind of this this precursor of what's happening right now this can be almost considered to be that that velocity that build it's this it's this energy that comes in it's this process that is occurring within you that is then allowing you to kind of transcend these circumstances this is almost a truth or some kind of a purpose you were supposed to uncover during that that kind of that dig you know that deep dig that deep dive through that process of kind of sifting out that silt that's coming up this is the gold that you are finding this is that precious metal this is that um, that purpose purpose or that core of you being very unearthed um, and also with this cosmic scene here again this idea and and this image of almost like a portal so um, really a lot correlating with again what's happening cosmically right now um, what's really coming in from that a lot of downloads a lot of crown shocker activations as well for the for some of you out there um, a lot of tingling in your scalp might be felt um, at the top of your head and and all of this really just being a process of again uh, your physical body responding to what is happening to you on an energetic level translating that your energy body translating that to your physical vessel to your intellectual mind to your corporeal self um, so as overwhelming as that can feel you know just again taking that time to really you know do that self-care you know isolate rest nurture yourself take it easy on yourself um, if you're somebody who's who really considers yourself a doer um, and you you have a hard time resting you have a hard time being in that space of peace um, if you're somebody who you know has been actively engaged in this process of ascension and and you've you've really tried to stay on top of that on top of your spiritual work um, on top of really you know facing things and, and making sure to keep your energy clear keep your vibration high this right is what is happening right now can almost be that forced period of rest that's telling you it's time to take a break you've done so much you've invested so much you've planted all these seeds and put all this intention in that this is a period of time that um, it's almost so overwhelming that it's kind of forcing you to slow down forcing you to just sort of allow to flow to let the seeds that have been planted and what is happening energetically um, to carry you and to carry this connection forth to where it will next go to where it is next intended to be so I'm going to get some guidance for you now about um, just this whole situation and what's going on at this point in time energetically. Okay, and we've got the union of hearts, a love connection that defies explanation. 
So that is really appropriate guidance there that um, you know talks about these heart chakra activations and again this bonding between you and this person um, energetically if you are in no contact but also just in the interactions that you have with them if, if you are still in contact with one another in the physical realm there's an energy exchange that happens even in the most kind of benign or subtle ways even in the most casual interactions that you know as you both then are kind of going your separate ways the conversations over or you know you're you go to sleep at night it's all sort of that energy is is really um it's helping to be a catalyst of some internal mechanisms within the both of you to help you kind of step into this next chapter of your life to really reach that next potential for yourself um, individually and also with this connection. This is this energy of two people growing as individuals um, and through that personal growth growing towards each other. Um, you know, kind of this, you might experience even energetically feeling closer to this person, um, a return of this person or, or feeling that energy gravitating back towards you. Um, again, reflective of the work you've kind of done on yourself and you're, you're doing on yourself that this person has done or is doing on themselves. Um, the receptivity to what is coming in. This is really guidance as well to, um, you know, flow with this, allow this, try as much as possible not to resist this. If you're feeling these sensations, maybe even in the heart chakra, um, pain or sadness, a tightness, a resistance from this person, or if you notice yourself um, leaning into these things, leaning into these, these kind of mechanisms or or maybe even these fears, being very cognizant of the fact that what you're experiencing, what you're experiencing is in some way experienced by this person as well. So it's a sense of mindfulness of um, really taking care of your own energetic health and your own energetic well-being because it directly can um, benefit or in some way kind of encumber this person. Um, it's something where, you know, your your energy, your your soul, it's, it's very much this idea of quantum entanglement that what happens or occurs with one affects the other. Um, it reverberates through that silver cord that kind of attaches the both of you through that heart chakra. That information is constantly being passed it's constantly being translated and shared there's momentum that is constantly happening um, so it's almost a sense of being very mindful of that um, doing the work for yourself first and foremost but also realizing and recognizing that what you do on yourself it does help this person it does have an effect on this person it shows the way for this person um, about you know maybe um, an energy they could be leading leaning towards what they will have to work on what will come up for them will be very different different um, for you in different sort of from you in different kind of um, themes there could be similarities but it's almost this idea of um, kind of the equal and opposite really of what um, the two what you are each experiencing so if you resonate as a divine feminine there could be wounds related to your inner masculine that are coming up um, that are reflective about perhaps even some things that um, you know that this other person has has really worked on within themselves you then in turn you are reflecting some of those inner feminine wounds to that masculine um, so there's this idea again of really mirroring for each other being that you know guide that signpost of this is what needs to next um, occur or even just that point of confirmation about these sensations that are happening um, what's being cleared and what's being upgraded it feels like something that a lot in hindsight it will start to make sense that these are the aspects of self that were really worked on that there's there's union in a certain capacity but that there's almost that other side of the coin for the two of you respectively which are now kind of needing to be worked on it's those things that you aren't able to really see and and tap into and and extract for yourself that is really happening in a very subtle way and what you're experiencing by way of the energy by the way of um, you know emotions that are coming up it's it's almost the the physical release of that energetic shift, of that energetic um, change or evolution that has taken place within that uh, that aspect of dislodging and and kind of then removing purging out um, that more dense vibration that is no longer necessary or you know is is something which is is kind of it's it becomes that river itself that carries the two of you as individuals and within this connection to the next phase of your dynamic. So those are the messages that I have for you. Um, I hope that this was helpful, maybe provided some kind of clarity. Um, 
a sense of not really being alone in this process or maybe even provided um, some seeds of inspiration of some things you might want to look into or try as far as um, maybe meditation practices, a little more mindfulness, um, or to help give you some kind of perspective maybe where this person is sort of operating from and then to kind of give you that peek into how they might be experiencing some things that you are going through as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.